May the holy names of Jesus and Mary and Joseph be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And whatsoever you do in word or in work, do all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we have four reasons to celebrate today in God's providence. First, Jesus Christ sanctifies his work as a carpenter in Nazareth and thus also makes holy our daily toil if we enter into the mystery of redemption by offering up our daily works. Thus we have a great feast today instituted by the wisdom of the magisterium of the Catholic Church against this false ideology, this false notion of communism, the great feast of Saint Joseph the Worker. Work imposed, we know, by the Lord as a penalty for original sin of our first parents, Adam and Eve, thus becomes a blessing and a means of sanctification through Christ and the cross. Second, we have arrived at this beautiful Marian month of May, the month of the Lady, the month to reveal in a special way our love of Mary with beautiful bouquets of spiritual roses given to her. Third, this Sunday we celebrate Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, or shall we say the Good Shepherd. And finally, today, the fourth reason to celebrate for us Franciscans is the 89th birthday of Father Stefano Manelli, child of Padre Pio, served over a thousand masses as a child, for the mystic Franciscan Padre Pio and one of the founders of the Marian Franciscans, the holy founder. We know not yet of his holiness, his true holiness as he lives amongst us. All will be revealed later, but just to note the love, his love of the lady. He has, he's a prolific writer. He has written more than 100 books on the Blessed Virgin Mary, even a number greater than the great Marian mystic, Saint Alphonsus de Liguori. So, what is the message today? Go to Joseph, and you will not be disappointed. He was a protector of the people and God's providence also in the Old Testament, and especially the Good Shepherd of the two greatest pearls in the New Testament, Jesus Christ and the Blessed Virgin. In scripture, Saint Joseph is a man of few words, completely silent in fact, but he's nonetheless a significant figure in the life of Christ and the life of the church. Saint Joseph then is prefigured in the Old Testament. Seeing Joseph in this light can help us draw closer to the mystery of the quiet carpenter in Nazareth, who became the patron of the universal church. The life of Joseph of Egypt corresponds beautifully with the life of Joseph of Nazareth. Turn your attention, if you read the Old Testament, which you should do, to Genesis 37. Joseph sold into slavery. He was almost murdered, killed by his brothers because they were jealous of him, jealous of the gifts that God had given him, jealous of how much his father favored him, jealous of his ability to interpret dreams, the dreams of Joseph in the Old Testament, the dreams of Joseph in the New Testament. He was a good little shepherd boy searching for the souls of his brothers with his multicolored coat. What happened, they threw him into a cistern, into a well, and left him there. They were going to kill him, but they decided to sell him off to some traders going to Egypt. Joseph of Egypt goes on to become this prefigurement, a type of Joseph in the New Testament. 
It's in Egypt that Joseph then comes into his own. The Lord always brings good out of evil. It is in Egypt that God's will is revealed to Joseph, that he become the amazing steward of Pharaoh himself. His gifts are used for the good of the world, not just for his father and the family. He feeds the world, we know well, with grain in a global famine. Joseph becomes a steward of all Pharaoh's reign. Joseph of Egypt prepares us to look then at Joseph of Nazareth in the New Testament. Why? Because Joseph of Nazareth was entrusted with the riches of a mighty God himself. Just as Joseph of Egypt was entrusted with all of Pharaoh's possessions and made steward of all Pharaoh's reign. Joseph of Nazareth, entrusted with Jesus Christ himself and the Blessed Mother, the two most precious pearls imaginable. Pope Pius XII instituted today's feast way back in the year 1955 in direct response to the surge of atheistic communism in the decades after the Second World War. Communism at that time was not so clearly understood as the dehumanizing anti-man, politically corrupt, and economically anemic system that it has later revealed itself to be. Communism, after all, had helped in them times to defeat fascism in Germany and Italy, so it was understood as a liberating force, not an impressive one in some countries. Thus on May the 1st, or May Day, as we call it, was the day of the worker in the communist lands, a day of rest, of triumphant, we see, used to see on the television of triumphant militaristic parades in Red Square, in, especially in Moscow, and the pride in all that communism had accomplished, supposedly for the proletariat, for the working classes. The day when the Soviet forces would parade for the world, communism, this is an evil turn from the Lord, an exaltation of the state. The person is no longer seen in the image and likeness of the Lord, but as an object of economic output, the value of life itself. The unborn and the aged is crushed, and thus the culture of death took its first root in the world in Russia after the Bolshevik Revolution in 1917. The first ideology, the first ideology to propagate, propagate the mass destruction of the unborn in the womb, abortion, the moral issue of all time. Thus, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we are now living the effects of global communism in today's world. The church then, the Catholic Church, rejects this communism. Communist countries have always attacked and tried to suppress the Catholic Church. The Soviet Union alone is estimated to have killed millions of Christians. Communists usually explicitly deny the existence of the Lord and seek to build society around this very denial. Atheism is, of course, we know, false. And any worldly view built on it is doomed to failure, injustice, and eventually destruction. Pope Pius XII then, and one future pope, then serving as a priest in Poland, we know as Karol Josef Wojtyla, already knew intellectually about communism. They had already intellectually torn the mask from the true face of communism. Part of the church's response to the communist appeal to workers then was to exalt St. Joseph, the worker, on May the 1st as a Catholic alternative to Communist May Day. Not only was St. Joseph to be understood then as the husband of Mary and the foster father of Jesus, but also as the patron of labor. He was the carpenter 
as we read in the Holy Gospel, the working man who taught his godson, Christ, how to fashion his works of wood for the glory of the Lord. Thus, for more now than 65 years, the church has observed today, May 1st, the feast of St. Joseph the Worker. On this day, we reflect on the example that St. Joseph gave us with his time on earth, as well as his intercession powerful from heaven. Because St. Joseph is the patron saint of workers, May the 1st also provides the opportunity to deepen our understanding of the meaning and the dignity of human work, as well as to take action to contribute to a more just society. Pius XII then exalted St. Joseph as a true icon of human labor in contrast to the rough factory worker in an industrial plant in communist Leningrad. St. Joseph did not have his fist raised in anger at the capitalist oppressors of Nazareth. He was not leading a mob to burn down his boss's house or deny the value of private property. St. Joseph worked then beautifully as a normal person would work. He was quiet. He did his duty. He provided his family with food and shelter in Nazareth. He didn't see the injustice lurking behind every corner. He most likely made excellent furniture with Christ his son and received a fair wage for his handiwork. Thus, work from a Catholic perspective, what we learn today is a source of dignity. Sanctify then your workplace. It has to be done. A life of pure leisure is no life at all. God the Father worked in creation for six days, then rested, and God the Son also worked as a carpenter. When man works, then he is participating in God's own work. Thus work is a gift from the Lord to be used as a powerful means of our salvation. Offer then, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the message today, offer up your daily toils as little redeemers of Mary in this month of May. Whatsoever you do, Colossians 3, do it from the heart. Make everything a sweet offering supernaturally. Jesus Christ and Mary and Joseph are found in our very work. So if we do it well, we give them glory. And if we do it poorly, in a haphazard manner, we offer them a poor sacrifice. The earth then becomes our altar when our daily work is our daily offering. Constant daily work then was good enough for St. Joseph and for the son of man. So it is good enough for all of God's children also. Thus, work is the pathway to holiness. St. Joseph then, indeed, is the light in the darkness and the model of all workmen. Can we not say then that St. Joseph is the good shepherd also today, patron and protector of the Holy Catholic Church, the one who looks after the Lord, the lady, and his flock. Consecrate then all your works to this most powerful advocate. He brings to light the malice of the enemies of the family. He brings light into the darkness of erroneous movements that seek to strip people of their human dignity and eliminate God from the minds and hearts of families and nations. Whether he is confronting communism, fascism, or any other kind of political ideology, St. Joseph is thus the protector of human dignity. He is the terror of demons. Go then to St. Joseph. Ita ad yourself. Go to Joseph. Only when you die will you know the power of this heavenly patron. Sanctify your work and your daily chores. Be silent before the mystery of this great patriarch of the church today 
and one day you will see his smiling face in paradise. Amen. May the holy names of Jesus and Mary and Joseph be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. in unum Deus. Pode um dia ter